Welcome back. Let's have this quick talk on Stoic philosophy. I want to leave you today with one message, which is dichotomy of control. I've been thinking that this is really important in everyone's life. And I'll be repeating this message throughout this presentation. The phrase looks a bit complex, but it's very simple. There are only a few things that are under our control, and many things are not under our control. And I've been thinking that I would have been done with this presentation long back, but then BSML threw a spanner into my plan. We didn't have the internet connection in the residential quarters for the last couple of days or in the campus. And thanks to Bob, this has been fixed. And this presentation would not have been possible without Bob's help. Thank you, Bob. Let's talk about some of these emotions that we go through on a daily basis. Fear, stress, disappointments, and anger. And there are some people who have learned how to handle and how to react to these situations. And we can call them stoics. It's not that they don't experience these emotions. It is the fact that how they handle when they experience these situations. And I've been told some of these superhuman characters that many of us know are based on stoic philosophies. What is philosophy? It is a love for wisdom. In the ancient times, people like to have discussion and talk about their experience, the knowledge based on arguments and logic. Okay, what methods they use in philosophy? It all starts with a big question, anything under the sun. And then they carry on with a discussion. They make rational arguments based on reasons and logic and then make a presentation to the people who are interested to hear about it. This all originated with Pythagoras. That's what people say. But then the philosophy has no time. And it is the same Pythagoras that the Pythagoras theorem can attribute it to. Then came Socrates was born in Athens. Many of us attribute philosophy to Socrates. And we also know that he was put to death for asking too many questions. And these are the great Greek philosophers, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. And some of you might know Aristotle was the teacher of Alexander the Great. Let's get to the hero of today's presentation, Zeno. Zeno was born in Cyprus. He was a wealthy merchant. And he had a shipwreck one day. And as people joke, he became a philosopher. And he traveled to Athens. And he started a school of Stoics. And he says, to achieve happiness, one has to live a right way according to the nature. And these are different parts of stories. The first thing is very, very important, logic. Whenever you face a problem, use logic, reasoning. Then comes physics, the matter. Our body is made of matter. The universe is made of matter. And the third important thing is ethics, which is core of Stoic's philosophy. This is very similar to Indian philosophy. Many of us related to Indian philosophy know that Atman and Brahman are not gods. And Atman means it's a soul, it's you, it's oneself. And Brahman means the universe everything outside of us. 
In Indian philosophy, these three things form the four pillars, Vedas, Brahmanas, and Upanishad. Vedas are the songs, hymns that people sing to the gods. Rituals are the sacrifices and other things that people do. And the last one is the Upanishad. These are the philosophical texts contemporary to Aristotle, Plato, and Zeno's time. And this is actually called Vedanta. Upanishad is called Vedanta because it's at the end of the Vedas. Let's get back to the dichotomy of control. As we discussed already, the health, our own body, the wealth, the relationships, all of this are not under our control. Only our thoughts and actions and reactions to external stimuli are under our control. People usually fall in love, but then they have no control whatsoever on the outcome, how the other person will react. So we should worry about what's in our control, then life will be much, much better. Imagine that just young child had an opportunity to become a singer or a musician and could be signing some autographs until someone shipped her outside the country. This was not absolutely under her control. But then she could be happier on top of hills that's a different matter altogether. Okay, now, when we have a problem, we have to think and approach in a certain way. If you can fix the problem, if you can do something about it, then do not worry because you know what to do, how to fix it. But if you can't do anything about that problem, there is no use worrying about it. And there is a core philosophy of stoics, which goes back to the dichotomy of control. Worry about things that you can do something about. Coming back here, stoics insist that unhappiness is a result of our ignorance. We have expectation which doesn't match the reality, which is very common in most of these situations in our life. Exams and opinions, which are two important things of many things under the teenage mind. What do they think about me? What is she thinking about? What is he thinking about? But then we don't have to worry about all that. We should only worry about and focus on the things that we have control about. Remember this 80-20 rule. In life, whatever you do, regardless of the situations, there will be always 80% of people on one side, 20% people on other side. They may either like you or not like you. So you can do the math any way you want. Stoics has important social philosophy, which is related to universal truth. Read this sentence. I am not an Athenian or a Corinthian, but a citizen of the world. So they have a higher philosophy where they talk about goodness for everyone in this planet. Let's have a quick look on this human evolution. Look at this. Three million years ago that human species came into being. And then we have been living in this planet for at least 10, 12,000 years as a modern human being. But still, we have so many problems. Looking at this map, people attribute that humans were first appeared in Africa, and then they moved out of Africa into Middle East, and then took these various paths even though we came from same source, we have so many differences among ourselves. 
and then we fight about those differences which doesn't have any meaning in real life we should practice universal love which is very very important we should understand that we all come from the same place and we are all made of same matter and that's what seneca says uh, another great stoic philosopher and here he compares slave and the owner he says the slave is smiled upon by the same skies and on equal terms with yourself breathes lives and dies look at that philosophy beautiful then comes marcus aurelius he is considered one of the five good emperors in the roman empire very very important you must focus on this he says every morning say to oneself i shall meet today ungrateful violent treacherous envious uncharitable man all of the ignorance real good and evil the important thing is i can neither be harmed by any of them for no man will involve me in wrong nor i can be angry with my kinsmen or hate him for we have come into the world to work together that is the social philosophy of stoics universal brotherhood what can we all do in the new year towards the happiness we should understand and love nature take time to look at your skies look at the plants and flowers and the beauty very very important to understand the nature reason whenever you are in a difficult situation think about it use logic think about the universal love where we need to care about every one of the human beings on the planet journal keep a journal write down things that happen and reflect on them contemplate on them and have a gratitude people say gratitude can change everything in one's life and i wish you all a very happy new year 2021 and thank you